This video will show you how to solve what's called a two-step equation. The reason this is called a two-step equation is because two operations have been done to x. Somebody started with some value of x, they multiplied by 3, and then they added 5, and the result was 14. What we need to do is work in the reverse order to get the x alone. Now, think about what this is. This is 3 times x plus 5. The last thing that was done was 5 was added to this quantity over here. Since it was the last thing that was done, it's the first thing we need to undo. So our first step is going to be to subtract 5 from both sides so that we maintain a balance. When we do that, our 5's are going to cancel right here. We're going to be left with 3x equals 9. Now, here is a familiar one-step equation. 3 times x equals 9. To undo that, all we have to do is divide by 3. These 3's will cancel right here, giving us x alone, and x equals 3. We need to think about checking that x equals 3. So if x equals 3, we're going to put 3 in for that x and do the arithmetic. 3 times 3 plus 5. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. It checks, so we know we've done the problem correctly. One way to think about these problems to help you decide what you need to undo first is to think about this being perhaps a prisoner or someone you're trying to get free. This is a guard really close to the person. This is a guard out on the perimeter. If you were trying to sneak in, you're going to try to get rid of this guy on the perimeter first. So we're going to add two to both sides to undo that. That's not the math of it. The math of it is the last operation that was done was to have two subtracted. But this little war analogy might help you keep straight what you have to do first. So add two to both sides. These are going to cancel out for us. And we're going to have 4x over here. Negative 6 plus 2, those are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger, which is negative, and subtract. Now we're down to a one-step equation, 4 times x. Undo that by dividing by 4. These 4s will cancel, and you're left with x equals negative 1. Let's plug negative 1 in for that x and do the check. And we have 4 times negative 1 minus 2. And we want to know, does it really equal negative 6? 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. This checks, so we know that we're correct. I can change order around. I can put the variable on the right side. Still, I want to get this x alone, so I need to get rid of these people on the perimeter. That's minus 9. Undo that by adding 9 to both sides. Then our 9's are going to cancel out here. Basic arithmetic here. Keep the sign of the larger and subtract. Remember, it's x you're trying to get alone, so we need to divide by the coefficient in front of x, which is 3. Those 3's will cancel out, bringing down negative 3 equals x. The check is a matter of 18, negative 18 equal to 3 times negative 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 minus that 9. You can think about plus a negative if you want. Negative 9 plus negative 9 does equal negative 18, so it checks. This may not look like it's a two-step equation, but it is. This is negative x plus 6. This negative x can be thought of as a negative 1x. But the first thing I want to do is subtract 6 from both sides. Those 6's are going to cancel. 8 minus 6 over there is 2. So here's where I would think about this negative x as a negative 1x. And to undo negative 1 times that x, we need to do the opposite, which is divide by negative 1 which will give us x equals negative 2. Now that's several steps to get down to this fact that x is going to equal negative 2. There's another way to think about this problem from this part on, and it's just a matter of we don't want to know what negative x is. We want to know what positive x is. So change that sign. I'm just going to change that to a positive. But if I make a sign change on the right side, I must make a sign change on the left side. And I still end up with x equals negative 2, but I just thought of it differently. Same kind of problem, but I've switched the order on you, and you need to be careful about something. That negative right there applies to the x. It does not apply to the 10. The 10 has no sign in front of it. Therefore, it's understood to be a positive 10, which means if we're going to undo that, we need to do the opposite, which is subtract 10 from both sides. Those 10s will cancel. Also be careful with this. This is not just an x. It is negative x. Bring the negative x down equals negative 16. Two ways to go from here. 
the long way is to think of it this being negative 1x equals negative 16. Solve that by dividing both sides by negative 1, which gives us x equals 16. On the other hand, right from here, I could have said I want this to be positive, so I'm going to make it positive, and therefore I'm going to make this positive. Either way, you get x equals positive 16. Sometimes we have fractions involved, and it's still the same process, it's still the same order. This 2 thirds times x, that's closer, minus 6, this is the guy on the perimeter, get rid of that first, so add 6 to both sides. Those 6's will cancel for you. 10 plus 6 is just 16. This takes us back to the one-step video where we have a fraction coefficient in front of x. To undo multiplying by a fraction, you need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Good news because the 3's cancel, the 2's cancel, giving us x all by itself, and then we just have to decide what we want to do here. I would think about putting a 1 underneath the 16, and I would reduce. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 into 16 is 8, 8 times 3 is 24. If you prefer, you could just multiply straight across. 16 times 3 is 48. 2 times 1 is 2. 48 divided by 2 is 24. Same idea, switching the variable over to the right side is still a matter of I need to undo this plus 3. So subtract 3 from both sides. Those cancel. And we have negative 9 equals 5 fourths x. That is a fraction coefficient. Let's undo that by multiplying by the reciprocal of that coefficient, which is 4 fifths on both sides. The 4's cancel, the 5's cancel. Give this one, negative 9 a 1 denominator. And then when you look here, there is no canceling you can do. All you can do is multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and you get negative 36 fifths equals your x. That's an improper fraction. That's perfectly acceptable. Some people may want you to switch it to a mixed number. Some people may want you to switch it to a decimal. It just depends on what your teacher or what your book wants. Another two-step equation here. Same caution I had for you a couple slides ago. That minus goes with the 3 fourths, not with the 8. That is a positive 8. If you're going to undo a positive 8, do the opposite, which is subtract 8. Those 8's will cancel for you. What comes down is a negative 3 fourths x. Negative 1 and negative 8 is a negative 9 because they're both negative. We add and keep the negative sign. This is a fraction coefficient. We need to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of a negative fraction will still be a negative fraction, so we're multiplying both sides by negative 4 thirds. A negative times a negative will make a positive. These 4's are going to cancel. These 3's are going to cancel, so the left side is just going to leave it with an x. The right side, give a 1 to the denominator, and then reduce 3 into 3 once, 3 into 9 three times. Now this is negative 3 times negative 4 is going to give us a positive 12.